Welcome to the Life is Relationships podcast, where we share biblical truths about marriage, parenting, and discipleship. The desire of CTCI is to see the hearts of individuals and families restored in their relationship to the Father, and for them to be empowered to have thriving, godly relationships that impact the communities around them. I'm your host, AJ Selby, and on today's episode, we'll be talking with Susan Pons, where she'll share with us about emotional intimacy with others, the effects of oversharing, victim mindsets, and how easily intimate boundaries can be crossed without a single touch. Take a listen. Well, Miss Susan, thank you again so much for coming back on the podcast today. Mm-hmm. Um, we wanted to just talk today, and um, you talk about intimacy a lot. You talk about duty versus intimacy and just the importance of what that looks like. But what what are some ways that people view intimacy today that maybe um, – maybe they're, they're not realizing that it's not just only about the physical and, and what are like some boundaries that maybe get overstepped that we don't realize we're stepping over? Well, we are bombarded in today's world, whether it be, um, magazines, whether it be commercials, um, whether it be the clothes that uh, are being worn every, they're, so many avenues um, and bombardments that we have that makes intimacy sound like it's all physical. And we we can hardly go into a store. We can hardly turn on our televisions. And as I said in the other podcast, AJ, that our young people have been robbed of of true intimacy and intim- and marriage is is in a special realm for intimacy and it is to be uh, intimacy for marriage really begins before we're married by being friends yeah i know that um for uh, lair and i our we were friends we had the opportunity of you know being childhood, high school, sweethearts, all that kind of thing. But we we had a, a wonderful friendship, and it built trust in us. But even with that, even though he grew up a mile from, our, from, our, from my home, we had to learn a new concept of intimacy. And that, that was in, in the emotional realm that changed, I mean, the love Larry and I got married on was not enough for us to have four children in 38 months, which is what happened. Wow. Yeah. And so a new kind of intimacy (laughs) in survival even had to be developed. But I think it's a sad thing in our country that we cannot define intimacy in any other way except in the the physical sh- sexual realm and in God's order that should be saved for that beautiful concept called marriage in marriage for women it really is having a a husband who will listen more in the um, emotional realm yeah and for men it is the physical is more is very very important but if we save that uh, for the marriage realm, I think, I think I know that there would be much less suspicion going on and much less freedom to step outside of our marriage vows. Mm. And I think, Miss Susan, what you're what you're talking about here isn't just it's not just the physical. Like like you're saying, there's mm-hmm. far more in terms of the emotional. Um, and what are some ways? Like I know that I personally have talked to some people that when when they begin dating somebody, they just lay all their cards out on the table mm-hmm. about their entire past and every struggle and and the things that they've dealt with in life. Um, is would you consider that to be something that is really something that's supposed to be for for that marriage? Well, I see that not only in what we call the world's ways. But even in Christian dating, there's just something that says 
this is this is who I am, and it's all put out there on a table. And really, honestly, I think for young men, when a, a girl does that or a young woman does that, it's like, whoa, uh, what you know? Who yeah. are you? And I think it goes the other way too. It can go when the a, other way when a young man is doing that. Yes. it's almost a an even larger red flag for a young woman to go, whoa, yes. hey. I don't need to know all that about you right now. That's right. And I like what you were speaking of this morning, AJ, when you said that until you were engaged, you had not laid all your cards out on the table. Yeah. And I I think that, I mean, that came from, from Amy and I both spending time in, in learning from you speak on and talk about intimacy and how it's not just the right. physical where... Even though we were dating, we we took it in those different levels. We were just friends, mm-hmm. and then we began dating, and you know we shared a little more about ourselves. But it wasn't until we were engaged that we both we put it all on the table and said, "Hey, here's your opportunity. Yes. <laughs> here's here's all my dirty laundry." Mm-hmm. But I feel like some people today, in in the name of transparency, they yes. they put everything out there and say, "Here's all of me. You can take it or leave it." Yeah. And then we end up people end up in in really difficult and hurtful positions because people will leave it and now this person knows all of this stuff about them. Exactly, AJ. And I think victimization, the concept, the whole concept of I'm a victim, and if that doesn't come, come out at some point, then after marriage, I loved what you did about in- engagement, that you kept it till then. But victimization has taken over our country, I feel like. It's taken over our our conversations. It's taken over our emotions. And I I think that's why I love Winston Churchill, because if there was ever a man who could have been a victim, he, he he was one who could have been. But he constantly overcame victimization. And I liked that about my own father, who was one of 11 kids and dirt poor farm and lived through the depression, starving, and then went into World War II to fight for our nation. There were so many that crossed paths in my life that showed me that that wasn't the number one thing, that I was a victim. Yeah. And we need those kind of heroes again today. Do you feel like the the victimization that you're talking about in relation to this is more about um, people wanting to feel um, comforted or or validated for what they've been through and accepted by somebody who recognizes those things about them? Probably both. Okay. Um, and probably just because that's the style now. <laughs> And um, I'm not in favor of holding things in. I do believe there's a place for uh, godly counsel and that sort of thing. But um, I really know that uh, we all have things that happen in our lives that, that were not good. But the truth of the matter is, in the Lord... He talks about us being overcomers, not undercomers. And sometimes we have to rise above what has happened to us in order to help somebody else. And and uh, I see it so much in young people. You can tell by the way they dress or the way they hold their head or this sort of thing. It, it It's a shame that victimization has become the identity so many, not everyone, but that so many want to take in today's world. Yeah. What are, what, if you could, if you could pick maybe two or three areas um, that maybe people are unaware that they're oversharing, that they're, that they're really overstepping the bounds that they should and sharing too much and having too much intimacy or familiarity, what would, what would two or three of those areas be, do you think right now? Well, I think it's just what you said. I mean, our girls went to a Christian university and um, it wasn't hard not to uh, recognize that some of the girls 
came into that school wanting a husband, which is fine. That's good. We, I think most women would like to have a husband. But they came in and they would begin to date a boy and they shared every emotional thing about themselves. And then the boy, because I think he was scared off, you know, the relationship would break up. So I, I think friendship and just learning how to have a good time together and uh, share those wonderful experiences. And the second thing, I believe that now the it's normal that um, many of the young people go into the sexual experience before they even know the other person's name. And I think that's a grave uh, sadness for uh, the young people, and especially for those who know the Lord, because his word tells us how we are to behave in that manner. Yeah. Wow. So good. Well, thank you. And actually, before you go, um, you've, you've shared before about just familiarity and how um, there's this great story that you have of growing up and having Larry driving his oh, car. Yes. Can you, can you share that story with us? Because yes. I think it, it's so simple, but yet it paints such a clear picture of how simple boundaries can be. Yes. And how important they can be. Yeah. Well, I had a mother who was, um, I, I guess I could have called her old school in her views of dating her girls. I was the middle of three girls. But she told me when Larry got his license, she said, now, you can ride in the car with him on Saturday nights when you date, but you are not to ride home with him in the daytime. You're not to get used to hopping in the car with him. Now, this was my mother. And I said, what do you mean? She says, because that will make you too familiar. So a funny story that happened, it was on a Friday afternoon, and Larry was the quarterback on the football team. And Friday afternoon, they didn't have practice. So he was in his car, and I was walking home on the sidewalk carrying this big pile of books. And all of a sudden, his car just uh, came up. He drove his car right up to the curb, and he said, Susan, hop in the car, and I'll take you home. And I said, I'm sorry, I can't get in the car with you. And he said, why not? And I said, because my mother said it would make us too familiar. <laughs> and I kept walking, and he said, and he kept driving along next to me on the sidewalk. He said, well, just put your books in the car. And I said, oh, no, I can't. <laughs> and he said, really? I said, my mother said that would make us too familiar. Well, to make a long story short, he drove next to me all the way down Main Street. There were cars behind us honking, all of this sort of thing, but he just would not leave. <laughs> but when we got to uh, my house, which was about a mile away, I think, I was, um, I got to my sidewalk and Larry got outside the car and he said, Susan, let me carry the books for you up to the door. And I said, oh no. And he said, I know that would make us too familiar. <laughs> and I kept walking and he said, Susan, I said, what? He said, I'm going to run the opening kickoff for you tonight. I said, really? He said, yes. And you know what? He did. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my story on fam becoming too familiar too soon. But I believe my mother was very wise in that. <laughs> yeah. And it, it really does. It paints such a simple picture that even though we all, as, as human beings, have a desire to be seen and known, mm -hmm. but to realize that we don't need to cheapen the experience of getting to know somebody yeah. slowly in the sake of trying to be transparent and air our laundry. Yes. It's really, um, there's a beautiful thing to be had by taking things slowly, one step at a time, and only sharing what needs to be shared when that person needs to know. Yes, and really that experience with Lair was, uh, that was an intimate experience. 
And we've never forgotten. We go back and laugh about that. We've told our children and others about that experience. Mm -hmm. Well, wonderful. Thank you, Miss Susan, so much. We yes. really appreciate you coming and just sharing just these beautiful stories that you've learned throughout your life. Thank you, AJ. Thanks so much for listening to today's episode. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next one. And we would love if you left us a review. For more information about CTCI and our upcoming programs, be sure to check out ctcilife.org. This podcast is a production of Christian Training Center International. It is produced by AJ Selby, Rebecca Wall, and Seth Stradling.